believe it or not, Necro Dwomake is heading back to the Super Bowl. She's here to talk about it. Lockdown <laughs> Women's Basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are Locked On Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Locked On Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Magdal, thanking you for making us your first listen every day. Of course, we do podcasts about women's basketball six days a week. Make sure you're subscribing to YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And thankfully, it's not just me. We have better hosts, too. The whole team at The Next is part of our team doing this all the time. We're also reporting over 100 reported pieces about women's basketball every month. You can subscribe $9 a month, $72 a year. Make sure you're supporting the work covering the sport. And so given that, it is a little odd that I have Neko Gwumike here to talk, but first, not about basketball, but about football. Neko is part of the Nicola Votra ad once again. Again, I, Neko, I don't mean to embarrass you, but you are a repeat Super Bowl champion because you were part of that last year. <laughs> and for you, like, this is old hat now, right? This is just what you do. I mean, you know, as it seems, but it still feels new. <laughs> <laughs> well, take me through it, right? So, like, what was different about this year? What was the experience like? You know, what 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 is what is what is it to be a part of a Super Bowl ad like this? Uh, it's it's amazing, surreal, really. Um, you know, last year we were bowling, um, and this year hmm. we are golfing with nice. some essence from the Caddyshack, and um, it's just pretty amazing to be featured during one of the biggest sporting events of the year and to share the stage with some amazing athletes like Serena Williams, Tony Romo. And, you know, I'm just really proud to be a part of this team. I think there's a bigger picture question here. And so for me, you know, part of it is, all right, I'm watching the Super Bowl when there's WNBA participation, when that is part of it, it says to me that we're, we're seeing a breakthrough into the larger pop culture and how important that is. Does it feel that way to you? Does it feel like it's saying something not just about like, hey, here's a fun thing where you get to bowl, you get to golf, you're on a Super Bowl, but like representing the W in that way. Representing the W, representing women in sport, um, representing black women in sport. Um, it's There's just so much that's important about it. And to be to be part of something that means more than just being in a commercial is really what makes Michelob what it's all about. And I'm, I'm glad that I'm, I'm a partner with this, with this amazing team and to have fun doing it as well is it's another part. It's another component of the representation. No doubt about it. And, and I do have to ask, you looked very smooth out there bowling last year. I appreciate year. that. <laughs> is, is that a sport you play? And then I have a similar question about golf, you know, kind of how you got ready for your on-camera moment doing both of them. Well, bowling definitely much more leisurely than golf. Golf, I don't, I really, I've gone to, you know, the range a few times, but um, I was actually surprised at my form and what I was able to do <laughs> while I was out there. And, you know, you got to give it up to Mikolo. They always make you look good. <laughs> Are you planning on pursuing a golf career or do you think this is probably as far as I am as not golf? making any promises with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so obviously we are in the midst of free agency. It's crazy since we are pre-recording, you know, I'll just, I'll give our listeners, Oh, wow. That was an amazing trade. I can't believe that <laughs> signing happened. You know, we'll keep it real general, but more significantly, and you know, this because it's certainly the case on my side, on the reporting side, there's so much happening. Um, first of all, from the perspective of just like staying on top of it, like, are you a like constantly on Twitter person? Or are you somebody who's relying on a group of friends to be letting you know? How are you following all the action that's going on here? I consume it as it comes. You know, I, I'm definitely not um, 
parked on the porch on the Twitter porch. Like that's just, that's definitely not me. Um, but if I see something, Oh, wow. If someone sends me something, Oh, wow. Um, I definitely am just kind of a day by day in the present type of person. So that's probably more Chanae's lane. <laughs> that, is, that is true. And, and we will get to that because she is obviously an important part of the media, frankly, across leagues. Um, mm -hmm. We're talking very specifically, though, about a process that in a lot of ways you help create in your work. And, you know, for my listeners who I, I, I'm sure know this, but, you know, NECA's role with the WNBPA helped create this modern CBA, the current moment that we're in. And I, and I just, you know, you talk about being day to day, but like, is there a sense of pride? Do you ever take that moment and see, you know, when it's going across the scroll, across the bottom of the TV screen, just like, you know, that this league is more in the news cycle because of a thing that you guys help create? Oh, yeah. You know, there's certainly a sense of pride, um, uh, especially, you know, after going through those negotiations with these amazing women and us really just trying to make things better for ourselves and for those that are coming into this league and to see it, you know, on the bottom line, to see it as breaking news, like that's how it's always felt for us. So it's, it's really amazing to see that um, more media is aligning with that. Yeah. Uh, it, it's also obviously leading to lots of different complicated factors, right? I mean, you know, prioritization has obviously been a huge conversation. And I remember the two of us having a conversation about that the day the CBA was officially signed, where the mm -hmm. conversation was, all right, salaries are going up, there's going to be this trade off. And I, I wonder for you, and in conversation with your fellow members, even just like, how has that conversation evolved over time over these last couple of years, now that we're kind of here at the at the dawn of it? Well, you know, at first it, there wasn't a lot of, well, amongst the players, there was, there was a lot of noise about it and, um, you know, understanding what that would mean for the diverse group of players that we have in this league. Mm -hmm. um, that can mean a lot of different things, but then also too, with the evolution of not just women in sport, but also brand partnership and brand representation and, you know, what that means for how you can, you know, supplement your salary in other different ways that, those are also conversations that have evolved. And um, quite frankly, you know, they're, they've turned from conversations into, you know, reality at this point, but, you know, the conversation around prioritization, it's, it's kind of like creeping in. It's, it's kind of creeping in as um, you know, that, I guess you could say, you know, just that, that shadow that we, <laughs> that we know is right behind us. Yeah. And um, we're just going to have to see how that works when it comes to um, the many players that are making a living in multiple leagues. And I, I my priority is that it doesn't adversely affect um, most of the players. Sure. And, and again, you know, to have a league where revenue itself goes up can drive overall what the salary cap can be. So, right. you know, I, I, in a lot of conversations we have about this and I've talked to the league uh, and, and Kathy about it as well, it's, you know, there's this new TV deal in the office mm -hmm. 2025. We've mm -hmm. seen the way the, there's been blown up values assigned to live sporting events. Does that feel almost like a sunset part of this provision, you know, that you can get to 2025 you can see salary caps go up and suddenly, you know, a lot of the squeeze of today might be gone. Mm -hmm. by now. Yeah. I mean, I'm hopeful for that. I'm certainly hopeful for that, especially as you said, as we see more visibility for, you know, the WNBA and women in sport. Um, I'm hopeful for that. I'm hopeful for a soft cap. I'm hopeful for expansion. You know, these are all things that we hopefully are speaking um you know, speaking presently about that will happen in the future and kind of coincide with the changes that we're making to prioritize the league and, you know, ultimately create a more robust salary and compensation um, system for its players. It, it all makes sense. And it's going to be fascinating to see. Uh, just will. We're on the cusp of something. Right. The, you know, um, mm -hmm. Lockdown Women's Basketball is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL playoffs are here, and as a result, we are excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On. They are the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, it's even better because they have a lot of features that make betting on sports fun and easy. 
New customers, join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel has all your favorite bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. Gino R.E.M. himself talks about this, too. In the women's game, there must be parity in terms of betting. And FanDuel has offered that and has an increasing number of women's sports options. It's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. To change gears a little and talk about Shanae. And, and, and I just, you know, first and foremost, like I want to go back to representation, right? To have a, a, a black woman on the air talking about the NBA, talking about the W as well, and being in places where when there is breaking W news, she's able to talk about that as well. How much do you think that has contributed to the larger scale seeing the WNBA being a broader part of the conversation? Um, I mean, you, you're, you're really saying it as plainly as it is, you know, that is, that is real representation. And, um, for her to have so much intersection, I think is really important. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that people who may not have followed the W as closely or as long as say someone like you or a fan, um, like anyone else, um, they're recognizing those things now. We exist in multiple spaces and Shanae is a perfect representative of that. Um, and I, I like to say that that's almost like, um, that's almost like how every player in the WNBA is just simply because of the grind that it takes for us to live this dream out and for it to be, be a better league than when we left it. So we seek, we scavenge for opportunity to, to the point where when people finally, you know, kind of recognize us in the light that, that we've always seen ourselves in, um, we are multi-hyphenate, multifaceted business women. And it's amazing to see that um, manifested in um, different representations across the league and across all of the other categories that these players um, heavily influence. No, no, I understand you knew Sinead before she was an award-winning movie producer. Is that correct? I've known her for a little bit of time. <laughs> when, you see these things, when you see her on TV, when you see her winning these awards, and producing films like 144, right? I, I mean, how hard is it for you to kind of reconcile that with like this person who's been a part of your life for your entire life, essentially? It's not very difficult because there's a lot people don't see in here between me and Shanae that always brings me back down to like, okay, she's phenomenal, but she's also phenomenally, phenomenally my little sister. <laughs> You have and to have balance. Oh, you have to. You have to. It's vital. <laughs> and and then even just the the playing. I know we've talked about that. The chance to be able to play together and and you you know to be so excited about that. Has it played out the way you expected? Is it? Are is your relationship basketball wise different on the court than it was at Stanford? You know, just like what has that been like in LA? Oh, I mean, there's a lot of parallels just simply because of you know the trajectories of our careers, but. Being in LA with her now and like her having two robust careers, um, it is a bit different. You know, we are adults, you know, and we are fortified in this world of making a difference and living our dreams. And so there's, um, it's almost as though there's an added motivation to play with her and to win with her. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And obviously, you know, for our listeners, I'm, I'm sure they know. Um, but you guys have played together going back to Stanford, obviously before that even. But I'm wondering when you've been watching Stanford this year, what you've seen, you know, what, obviously a close loss early on to South Carolina. And I think in a lot of people's minds set the pecking order of one, two, right. a lot of basketball since then. And I'm just wondering where you think this Cardinal team is right now and whether you see South Carolina as the team to beat or you see Stanford as a co-favorite by this point? Uh, you know, I think that, and I know, I know Stanford and I know Tar very well and every game is serious. <clears throat> and that early, that early game uh, against South Carolina, I think it was what everyone was waiting for. It's what everyone wanted 
that came out of that game. Um, but, you know, you have to learn and you have to get better. And mm -hmm. that's something that I see this Stanford team doing. Um, you can't have moments where, um, you know, you – you beat UCLA and then lose to USC. And I, I think Tara understand the, understands that. Um, and it's not to be overly critical. I just, I've been in those shoes. And so I know that the players there are being probably over, over, overly critical of themselves, but there's two, there's two concrete examples <clears throat> of adversity that they can always pull from as mm -hmm. they make this journey towards March and seeing what that looks like with this South Carolina team and, so many other teams that are doing well, you know, right now. And I'm really excited, not just for the basketball, but for the following. Mm -hmm. There's a mm -hmm. certain player who is talked about, obviously, very high up in Haley Jones. Uh, you see her game. I mean, she's got this broad basis skill. She does right. so many of the things that players need to do in the W. Do you see that game translating right away? Is that is that your guess is that she'll she'll have a relatively smooth transition? I mean, I think uh, with, like you said, with that skill set, it's not going to be difficult for her to assimilate into the W. Now, mm -hmm. finding her niche is something that'll be fun to watch. You know, she's a good size. She can handle the ball. She can drive. You know, she can post up. So it'll be fun to see, um, I guess, where she kind of lands on the one to five spectrum. It'll be interesting, especially in the W. I I, I strongly believe also in the W. Um and maybe this is because we don't have as many teams. Mm -hmm. um, teams have certain identities. And I think a lot of the rookies that get drafted, um, their success also depends on the system that they're in. No doubt. Um, even if it's a system that wanted you, you know. And so it's, it'll be interesting to see how all these players um, play in these systems that draft them. It's fascinating. Listen, I, I will. There are players who never got their niche. That right. to my mind day, I will believe, you know, in a different scenario would have and would have done right. extraordinarily well. So, well, it's expansion cannot come soon enough. But that is a different conversation, of course, altogether. <laughs> so even just beyond the question of finding the niche, because you talked about where you show up on the one through a five scale, um, you've kind of rejected that idea because you keep mm -hmm. doing a little bit of everything. And, 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 and the thing the number that jumped out to me, as you know, I'm a bit of a stats nerd on this stuff, is your true shooting percentage was the highest this past year that it's been since 2017. Uh, you know, the fact that you're finding new levels in, uh, you know, 11, 12, 13 year of your career is remarkable to me. And so I just wonder when you think about it, when you think about your identity, are you thinking about still ways in which you want to get better? Are there skills you think you haven't added yet that you're looking to add? Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I never believe you can master everything. Mm -hmm. I, I don't ever believe that. And um, even, even within my niche, so to speak, um, I think that I've rejected that idea because of that philosophy and understanding that there's always something I can get better at. Um, and each year I try to work on something different. And sometimes that different isn't a whole different skill set. Sometimes it's just incre in increasing the efficiency of something that I already do, you know, mm -hmm. and it's always fun kind of dissecting yourself in the off season and really figuring out not just, not just your goal, but how you tick to get to that goal. And I, I really do enjoy that, that disciplinary process. I mean, it shows. And then I'm curious, what is it? What's the one that you got right now? I mean, beyond golf, you know? <laughs> that was a good one. Um, well, right now, um, I'm really doing my best to, uh, I guess, get more comfort with the ball. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we dribble, obviously. You can have really high level dribbling skill set, which I personally is something that I've always wanted to work on each year and I work on it. Mm -hmm. But I think it starts with having a feel. Mm -hmm. I have a great feel for the ball, you know, on the block and, you know, kind of like eight feet out. But I want to have a good feel for the ball outside of that range. And that's something that I'm working on. Well, listen, your turnover percentage was already 10.9 percent, which is among the league leaders. So <laughs> that's hard, hard to imagine. That's, but that's all Tara. 
fair enough. Fair enough. I, I've, seen, I've seen you do it across the board. Right? I can't wait to do it. Well, Neka, I will leave you with one final question. Where will you be watching the Super Bowl to see yourself on TV? And what's that going to be like, you know, having done it last year? Well, I just might be in Arizona. <laughs> um, last year I was with my family. Um, but if, if I'm not in Arizona, um, then I'll be with my family. Will be very interesting. So, <laughs> McKay, thank you so much for taking the time. I know our listeners appreciate it. Listeners, thank you for making us your first listen every day. Go ahead and you can get your second listen. It's Game to Game NBA across the Lockdown Network. People talking about the NBA uh, every day. Insiders giving you that, you know, not insider in the Shanae sense, but we do our best in making sure that you are up to date on Game to Game NBA available on the Lockdown Network and, uh, and Odyssey. Until tomorrow, I am Howard Magdal wishing you a wonderful day. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are Locked On Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. 